I'm here with four ambassadors, et je passe en français, je suis ici avec quatre petits journalistes qui ont... I'm here with four journalists, and I'm going to give you their questions. Hello. Clément, I'm Clément. Hello, Thomas. I'm with IFRAC. Hello to all of you. We're very happy to be with you. And we are connected, we can see you now, today, right now. Hello. Hello to all. It's a pleasure to be with you, to speak to you from the space station. Well, in two days we'll begin. We're beginning with the first question. How does the water behave in space? And this is from Aman. Uh, he's a Frenchman from Aman. Well, the water in space, that's a good question. The water in space floats, evidently, like everything. I think the simplest response is that I make a small uh, demonstration for you to sh show you how it uh, performs in space. Wow. Well, there's the water in space, it's as simple as that. Unfortunately, uh, we're not allowed to uh, play to, to be too careless with it because there's a lot of electronic equipment around. Uh, but we do need water to wash and so forth, and we're well equipped in that regard. Well, uh, this is uh, Paul from the elementary school, and I was wondering about recycled water. How good is it? How good does it taste? But yes, actually, uh, recycled water is good. When we think uh, that uh, the water that we drink today is the uh, perspiration from yesterday and the urine from yesterday, but our system uh, performs very well. And of course, you, you would like to apply this to uh, uh, space travel in general, and yesterday's water is the water for, for today and for tomorrow and so forth. Why is there water on Earth and not on other planets? I am from the Collège Jove. That's a good question. First of all, there is water on the other planets, it's just that it's not in the liquid form, at least on the Moon. There's uh, water uh, on Mars in the form of ice. There's just a lot more in England in, on Earth and uh, liquid form, which allows life. Uh, and that's our atmosphere, of course, uh, is, uh, contains water, which uh, protects uh, the presence of water on Earth. We have this covering layer of the atmosphere. On Mars, that doesn't exist. Uh, and so, as we know, the uh, water does not remain. We're lucky on Earth that we have this uh, covering layer that uh, retains our water, but it's a very fragile system. We have to be careful. Uh, if you look out in space, you see uh, a, a dearth or a death of life uh, throughout space. We're very lucky that uh, we have it here on Earth. That's why we have to take care of our planet, because the entire system is fragile, very simply. Here's a question from Canil Oran. Well, how do you wash? How do we wash ourselves? Well, we use uh, humid or damp uh, cloths. You see, we rehydrate them with our uh, water distributor that we have on board, which is uh, connected to our uh, drinking or potable water circuit. We keep it for a, a week, after which we throw it away. You have to be careful because you see it's marked here at 150 millimeters of, uh, milliliters of water. It's not a lot of water. That's all that we have uh, to wash with. Water is very rare. Uh, it's uh, abundant on, it's fairly rare on Earth, but you can imagine how much more rare it would be in space. On Earth, we have to 
to be uh, have to economize so that everybody can have enough water every day in order to uh, meet their personal needs on Earth. But in space, it's all the more so. This is a this is a question from Oron Kalin from the Oron uh, Primary School. How do you wash yourself? Well, how do we wash yourself? Well, with these little washcloths I've been showing you, we rehydrate them and we do our personal uh, cleansing every day and we try to use as little as possible, very simply. The question, Thomas, is how do you sleep? Ah, that's the question, if I may. <laughs> well, how do we sleep in the space station? Well, look, I sleep very well in the space station. We float, you see, we're uh, attached to the wall with a sort of uh, davit. My, uh, my, uh, my cot is horizontal, others are vertical, mine is on the floor, others are on the, uh, on the ceiling. There's no uh, pillow, it's a little bit strange, but at first you get uh, but after a while you get accustomed to it. It really relaxes the muscles. There's no weight and I sleep very well on the space station. Station, this is Houston ACR. Stand by. The clients dropped off the line. We are going to reconnect them. Copy, standing by. Go ahead. This is uh, from Agicourt Rassé. Excuse me, I didn't understand. Could you please repeat your question? À quoi serviront vos expériences dans le futur? Baptiste CM2, Agicourt Jean Massé. This is Baptiste from uh, Jean Massé. Uh, school. What will your experiments uh, be used for in the future? Well, we do a lot of experiments inside the space station. We do experiments on man. Uh, we are uh, guinea pigs uh, for a lot of experiments. So there are a lot of physical and uh, biological experiments that are masked in Earth, on Earth, that we can do here in space. For example, we can use stem cells, uh, viruses uh, for medicines. We also study technology. We do uh, uh, studies on the biology biology and on the use of materials. Uh, the biology in space gives us access to a lot of things that we cannot see on Earth and that we can see only in space. And that is why the space station is a uh, scientific laboratory which enables us to advance the knowledge on Earth. And at the same time, what we do is we prepare the exploration for the future. Uh, we're going to be going further and further, for example, toward Mars. Uh, and every day, I live this on the space station. Nous voulions savoir comment l'eau parvient-elle à la station internationale. Clément, c'est Israël, 6e A et 6e B. This is Clément from 6th grade A and B from Senegal. And I thank you for allowing me to ask you the question. We see water comes from into the space station from Earth. We are supplied by cargo vehicles that come from time to time from Earth. 
that are launched at us by rockets and they come to resupply us. Uh, we produce uh, uh, raw materials, uh, spare parts, experimental uh, parts for scientific equipment and also food, of course. And so the second thing that we uh, are supplied with is recycling. We recycle as much water as we can, which enables us to go beyond the boundaries uh, imposed by the uh, small amount of water that we have. So we uh, use uh, our urine, we use uh, wastewater, all of that recycles, and we recycle every day aboard the Space Center. About uh, something like 80 percent of uh, the, the water that we uh, use, and so this uh, keeps us supplied in potable drinking water. Uh, this, well, the uh, Ile de Loire College, uh, Sebastian Colling. Uh, why is the water uh, not? Uh, well, it, it depends on geological factors. The Earth has got to filter the water. We need uh, flowing water, not stagnant water, which would uh, promote the growth of uh, bacterial the bacteria. It, there's a certain injustice about it. What we can do about it is change the technology and the deal that is available to the human race. Our recycling uh, system gives us potable water in space. It's been perfected, uh, but we have uh, produced a simplified version that can uh, give people access to potable water, to filter water on Earth. And this is what we think that the technology must be placed at the service of mankind to produce wa potable water, which is probably the most important fundamental uh, resource around the world, and this has got to become a major objective. Does it rain in Spain? This is... This is, I'm from, calling from Saint Croix, the island of Saint Croix. It does it ra rain in space? No, it uh, does not rain in space. But sometimes there's a rain, a, a, a shower of meteorites, but that's not a very good thing. Inside the station, as you can see, uh, the water does not would not fall. It would float around. It's a little bit strange. We have no meteorological systems, no clouds. There's the outside. Once I leave the space center, we're no longer protected by the walls. It becomes more complicated. There's no atmosphere. And so the water cannot exist in the liquid state outside in the empty with zero pressure and a practically absolute zero temperature. No, so it does not rain in space. I don't think I would have said that, but I've sort of missed the rain uh, on Earth. Uh, we sometimes get tired of rain, but here in space, uh, feeling space, feeling rain and being exposed to the elements is something that I miss. And it's something that I'm going to look forward to experiencing again when I get back to the Earth. How can we contribute to the needs of? This is George from Collège du Quartier. Comment peut-on? J'ai pas entendu la suite. How could I? I didn't understand all of the question. Our connection is not so good. You know, where it's rather difficult to hear in space. Our connections are not perfect. La question c'est comment peut-on? How can we contribute to the contribution of water for people who need it, especially where there is polluted water? This is this is from Villeneuve Saint Georges Educational College. Well, listen, uh, as I was saying a little bit earlier, we have the opportunity to be able to repair the injustices of nature because we have the technology. Technology has this negative side, but also a lot of positive sides because it improves uh, the quality of life, uh, extend the uh, lifespan, uh, help with medicines. Well, we work here in the Space Center, and we've developed a, an experiment, uh, it's a French experiment, and it's called this little uh, aqua, and it's a water container, very small as you can see. We can bring it everywhere on Earth, even into difficult uh, places where water is hard to get, good water. If it works in the Space Center, we're testing it here, we can apply that on Earth so that we can know exactly the quality of the water and so we can filtrate it effectively even in uh, zones that are very difficult to access. And so we're, we need to do is continue to work on this and use the technology to improve the inequities of uh, nature. What do you do for fun, for relaxation in space, in the ESA? Uh, my, uh, my relaxation and fun on the ESA? 
mon, well, euh, mon loisir dans l'ISS, tu sais. What I do for relaxation on the ISS, we don't have a lot of time uh, to relax, but a little bit on Sundays and in the evening, things that I like to do are, I like to look at Earth and to take photographs of Earth because it's really magnificent and I never imagined before I came. When you see photographs, it doesn't do justice to the spectacle of the Earth, which shines in the dark of a intense, magnificent blue, almost a phosphorus, phosphorescence. That's why we call it the blue uh, continent. We see the desert and the continents and the mountains and the, wind and the snow, the uh, lights at night, all of this passing by. So we spend a lot of time looking at Earth. Of course, we look at the planets and the stars, but we also look at the Earth quite a bit. Uh, this is the Paul Veillot uh, Elementary School in Couturier. I have not seen this film. Uh, Friends have told me about this movie. It made me laugh. I thought it was a joke that there were no ill intentions, bad intentions. What it means for me is the two things. It means that not only uh, people are interested in what's happening in the Space Center, which is good because what we do here, we do it for them. We're not doing it for us. I'm happy to go into space, but the research we do here is to help people. And that's why we're here, and so people are interested in that, even though there's joking about it, that's so much the better. The second thing that it listens in me is that the Internet is fantastic. There are so many things, including Wikipedia, we can learn everything over the Internet, and so it's really a little bit magical, but you have to be careful. There's some things that are a little bit uh, more obscure on the Internet, and so it's important to know what is true, what is not true, and to recognize the difference. I think that's part of your education, so if that can help as an exercise to arrive at recognizing what is true and what is not true, and if this can help young people so much the better, I think it's a positive thing. I think it's a positive thing. For Thomas, we have a message for you from the Minister of Education, Mr. Abdel Qasem. I have a simple offer to make to you. De continuer à intervenir comme cela auprès des élèves. Would you uh, like to commit to continue to be involved in these interchanges with students? And I see now a reason why not, because after all, uh, the education is the citizens' reservoir. And I think you're a wonderful ambassador, and I'd like to thank you in advance for your response. Well, listen, Madam uh, Minister of Education, yes, with pleasure. I, uh, this is part of my commitment to put uh, space to the service of people and not to make it an egotistical thing where we pick up medals on, on our uh, chest, which, of course, are useless. I'm happy to share this with the greatest number of people possible, especially the young, because it can inspire them to have careers that, that are useful, technological careers, but not only that, but to do things that are useful for the planet and also useful for progress. And so I'd like to continue with this commitment on Earth, once I was, uh, as a citizen, it would be a great pleasure to do so back on Earth. Thank you enormously for everything. Do we still have time for one last question? What will be your most beautiful dream that you could achieve? Uh, this is from Notre Dame School. Mon plus beau rêve, my most beautiful dream, beau rêve, listen, my most beautiful dream uh, is to um, le, le increase quality the quality or improve ESS the quality of uh, people's lives. Uh, That's what we do here in the ESA based on the research that we do every day. Evidently, though, to make people happier on Earth. That's what we do. Yeah, we're here really for them. And so as we go further and further into space, as we respond uh, to other questions that are more fundamental, where does life come from? What, how did water arrive on Earth, for example? Why did it disappear? from Mars, could it happen to us? This is my greatest dream or intention. If I can contribute to that even a little bit, well, listen, that would uh, be my commitment and my career would uh, have served something. And here you are, Thomas. Thank you very much for having listened to us and brought it, given us, to us a little bit of your precious time. Thank you and goodbye. Merci à tous. Thank, Au revoir. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.
station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. And thank you to all participants with the uh, European Space Agency. We are now resuming operational audio communications.